Hello everyone and welcome back to Red Dead Online with me, Long Claw, Valerian Steel, where we always deliver. We're still working our way through the new Blood Money DLC and in this video I'm going to show you how to complete the Jeb Phillips contract. This is one of the contracts, the crime contracts you can get from any of your Blood Money representatives and it comes in three parts and they get a little bit harder and the rewards are a little bit greater as you get through it. And this will hopefully take me to rank 23 and unlock the all important 40 capitale award that's what you're really aiming for uh, there are lots of different things you can get when you uh, reach certain levels with the quick draw pass but the one i'm really working towards is the capitale rewards because you need the capitale rewards to enter into the opportunities which is where you get your real money back so in this first mission, it's simply rescuing Jeb Phillips from the police wagon, taking out all of the guards that are riding alongside, and, and of course the driver, and then interact with Jeb, break him out, and he will jump on the back of your horse, and you need to lasso one of the dead bounty hunters and drag them up the road to the town of Van Horn. A lot of content on my channel for this DLC. I've been taking myself um, through the ranking process from level 5 up to level 15 and then from 15 up to level 20 and from 20 to 23 and there are only 25 ranks and I've also got tutorials on how to use the Capitale, where to find it, what to do with it. So check out the channel and have a look at my TikTok and my YouTube for all of the content you need to know. Now, once you're in Van Horn, just drop the bounty hunter on the floor and then a load of bad guys will start to spawn and once you've taken them out, take out the lanterns and cause a bit of havoc in the town and then some gang members will turn up. And when you've taken out the gang members, don't forget to loot them for the all-important Capitale. Anyone in the mission can hold Capitale. Sometimes it's just one and sometimes there's two or three pieces in notable members of gangs and things like that. And also check for any, any holdfasts and houses that are included in the mission. And then take him back to your content contact in the woods and drop him off. And that is the end of part one. Easy, right? Let's get into it. Okay, so over to part two, visit another contact, whoever is closest, it doesn't matter, you can access the, con the contract from anyone, and there are no cooldowns to wait in between these because you're progressing through one from one to another. If you wanted to replay part one, you might have to wait for a cooldown. In this second part of the mission, I find this the most difficult because you need to take out uh, all of his gang members, and this is in Butcher Creek, and it's not a difficult mission as such, but there are just a lot of the bad guys show up there's a new gang leader who is representing the gang while Jeb's been in prison and you need to wait for him to arrive and before you can access the mission or start the mission you need to set fire to his house so just follow the, the marker on your map everyone will just ignore you at this point in the mission as soon as you set fire to the house you're gonna to need to be aware that every single resident of Butcher Creek will come brandishing arms and try to kill you so shoot the lantern at the back of the house which is a little bit easier and then head into the woods and find a place of cover that will give you the advantage and also worth mentioning that if you head out the rear of the property and head this way and wait by this rock here this is precisely where the gang member will show up along this road to my left and as you can see the house is blazing away and as yet nobody's attacking me but before the gang member arrives some mounted uh, riders will appear on left and right and you need to take those out and once you've killed enough bad guys you will find that the gang leader arrives you're not going to kill him so be careful that you don't once you see him on your map and you see him marked in white don't shoot him and don't just be 
safety loosely shooting around because you may end up taking him out. Again, as with all of the Blood Money missions, don't forget to loot everyone uh, because they may have capital even they've definitely got money and gold and things like that. I'm a bit obsessed with looting people. Um, I think it's important to, to mention that the capital has basically been coded into the game and can be found throughout any of these missions. So if you can, if you get a chance to get inside one of the properties, look for lock boxes and things like that, wherever you can. Um, use your your um, dead eye vision to to locate any places of interest because you will need to pick up as much capital you need at least 15 to run the opportunities you see here the target has arrived on the left just down the road as I said take out any surrounding guards and then get close to him and lasso him I've got a reinforced lasso which I use with my bounty hunter uh, role and that just makes it a little easier he's less likely to break free you can shoot him a few times but just don't mortally wound him there he is, just stood there waiting for me. So lasso him, chuck him on the back of your horse and get out of there. If you can, loot as many people. It's not really worth hanging around there. You will get swamped pretty quickly, trust me. And uh, once you, um, you die, you lose a chance to loot any of the bad guys that you've killed before you die anyway. So best thing to do is get, once you've got him on the back of the horse, is get out of there and uh, you can try and loot him, but he doesn't seem to hold any Capitale, um, which is a little bit disappointing. But your drop-off point is just down the road um, towards the river. And just go to the right of the drop-off point so that you can access it. Don't try and go to the left because you'll get lost in the river and end up dropping him off the back of your horse. And uh, that is essentially it for part two so it's so easy these are not difficult and completing these in three parts uh, there are three of these major contracts the jeb Phelps, jeb phillips contract and the blue water contract and then the railroad contract drop him off and then move on to part three so the finale of this little contract um is actually a little, i find it a little bit easier than part two um, none of these are particularly challenging, but you're going to start off by heading to Annisburg, where Jeb Phillips has found himself in on the wrong end of the lawmen uh, in the north of the map. And your job is to try to get him to safety. Uh, you need to locate him. He's hiding out somewhere but once you've played this mission once you'll know that he's always going to hide in the same place there's nothing random about it unfortunately all of the places of interest and clues and everything will be located in exactly the same area which makes it nice and easy for you but doesn't create much of a challenge remember you can use any of the contacts in your map so wherever you're closest to just go there and you can also access the crimes uh, through the online menu so you can just and that will spawn you into the game right in front of a a blood money contact and um the awards for paying for completing these are increased as you complete the job so once you do part three you do get paid for each of the jobs that you finish and the payouts are usually between 60 and 100 um dollars for each part so you're going to get a decent payout for this and it doesn't take that long it's re really it's about 30 minutes to do the whole thing there's one clue uh, in front of the buildings in Annisburg and then just head across the road and behind the gunsmith shop and there's a house there. It's the only house you can actually enter in uh, if you do the collections or you ever spend any time in Annisburg for other reasons. You'll know that there's one property that you have access to and you can go through the front and the back door and there's stuff in both of the front rooms which you can collect um, as part of the, collect the collector's uh, role. And this mission you just need to enter the house and you get a cutscene. Jeb's hiding underneath the front window and the police, the lawmen, they're all outside. Unfortunately they will spot you and you need to exit out of the back door and hopefully if you're planning properly your horse will be waiting, Jeb will jump on the back and you can just ride along the railway track and lose the law there. They don't pursue you and will not pursue you off-road so just make sure you go off-road whenever you're trying to lose your wanted level in these missions. Sometimes you don't need to, but more invariably you'll need to uh, lose the law before you can get to the next part of the mission. And in this next part of the mission, the, the big shootout uh, is going to be at Fort Brennand. Um, this is actually where 
our contact Jeb has hidden his Capitale stash and that's what we're after. When you get there, there's some Lamone traders who have locked down the fort. So just enter inside and take them out. My advice would be to get inside and inside the building to your left. Uh, you'll know this if you, again, if you're a part of the collector role, you'll know that you go down in the basement sometimes to collect things. There's always a stash and cache of weapons and things. That's the best room to get inside. They can access it via the roof, but if you get inside and get a place of cover just to the left of the door, it gives you an advantage vantage point and you can take out all of the Lamone traders just by leaning around the door to your left or right and once you have cleared the fort of the Lamone traders you can not forget to, to loot them for any any goodies but then the law will start to arrive and the main part of this mission is to try and defend the fort against the the swarms of mounted police there is a maxim gun there which you can use but they will come from the front and behind so you will end up getting killed the best place to go and i've done this a few times is inside this this room and let them come to you they will then try to get into your line of sight so that you can then shoot them as they enter and you'll build up a nice pile of lawmen outside the building which you can loot before you leave and that's the best way to do it Eventually, when you've killed enough of them, you'll be told to regroup with Jeb, who's actually in the room with you. He's on his last legs, he's been mortally wounded, and eventually just collapses and dies. He doesn't hold any Capitale himself, but if you drop down into the basement here, there are a few bits of ammunition you can take, and there was also a, a ring from the collectors in this case. That will be different each time you come down here, depending on what rotation we're on for collections. But the important thing is in the lock box, which is to the left here, there is three pieces of Capitale, and that's a, just a bit of extra Capitale, which you must remember to collect. You don't want to be finishing these missions and not going home with any Capitale. Remember that the, the stash of Capitale that you're picking up uh, on behalf of Guido Martelli will go to his contact and you won't get any of that. So unless you pick up Capitale from one of the lock boxes or looting it off someone else, uh, one of the bad guys, you're not really gonna make enough. And it's all about making that Capitale. It's actually stashed around the back, but I've also seen it stashed in the corner underneath one of the towers. So I guess it can be random. Grab the Capitale, jump on your horse and hightail it out of there before the searching law members find you. And as you've taken out the majority of the forces, they shouldn't really pursue you that far. And none of the drop off points or the rendezvous points are very far away from wherever you are. So just head to your drop off point and trade over the Capitale and that will be the end of it. And you'll be pleased to see that I have managed to rank up to level 23 and that unlocks the all important 40 Capitale. So you do get Capitale paid back to you. I think I got 15 when I bought the hired gun kit. I think you get 25 when you reach one of the ranks and 40 when you reach level 23. And there are just two more ranks to go. Um, but that's really, that's been really quick. I mean, I've ranked up um, and I haven't been playing continuously, but since it came out on Tuesday, I've been playing a bit and I've managed to rank up to level 23 and I'll be going to 25 in my last video. So that will be the end of the quick draw pass. Remember the new quick draw pass comes out on the 2nd of August. So you have some time, but you do need to get all of these ranks out of the way if you've bought into it. And I do recommend buying into the quick draw club pass because it links in with the blood money DLC. You're going to get the most from the content. I also recommend getting the hired gun kit from the fence because that will also make your your boost your xp boost really quick i've got a 25 percent xp boost at the moment which is making everything i do count for a little bit more so we're all done with the jeb phillips contract time for me to head to my bar and chill out with the band and have a little drink don't forget to check out my content on my channel i put a new assassin's creed video up last night as well as some gta news we've got a big update coming on the 20th i think that's tuesday so i'll be bringing you all the news for that as well as finishing this off i've got a final the final episode of my resident evil biohazard video coming as well and then i'll be going back to resident evil the village and showing my second playthrough so i'm really excited about everything that's going on at the moment it's a great time for gaming let me know what you're playing talk to me in the comments below and i'll be back in another video very soon untwisted from my show